Hello, Rolf Stange here. Well, I've always been writing a lot on my website, spitzbergen-svalbard.com. So I thought just for a change, I try something different. I try a video blog and doing this for the first time, I would like to talk about something that is going on in Longyearbyen right now. They have started a hunting season. That may be a bit surprising because it's November now. So the polar night has started, it doesn't really get light anymore. And uh, it, it's not an ordinary hunting season. Of course, we are not talking about reindeer or anything, or anything. They are hunting mice. Yes, there are mice in Spitsbergen. Of course, they do not belong there by nature. They have been introduced by man. And um, it was in Grumand, which was a Russian mining settlement, has been abandoned since the early 1960s already. So when that was in operation, they had animals there and probably with the animal feed, mice got transported from the mainland to Spitsbergen to Grumandbüren and they have survived there. Although, as mentioned, Grumand was um, abandoned in 1962, I think it was, and they're still living there in the settlement and um, in the um, where there are layers of a peat kind of sediment under some steep bird cliffs on near the coast on either side of the settlement, and the uh, the mice can survive in this peat kind of sediment. So they are mostly ref um, um, living in this area, but um, they have been known to to get quite far away from Grumand also. They have been seen in Longyearbyen, both the, um, the mice themselves and traces and droppings and so on in, in the surroundings and they have been seen as far away from Grumandbyen as uh, Vinon, which is a little peninsula with a couple of huts in Sassenfjorden and I think it's something like 40, miles, uh, 40 kilometers as the crow flies plus the terrain of course, so that's really quite far away and considering that, um, we probably have to expect that the mice will sooner or later establish themselves in the open environment in the Arctic nature of Spitsbergen, which of course would not be great at all. Um, you will probably know that they have put a lot of effort into getting red, uh, <coughs> rid of rats in South Georgia, because there the rats were doing great harm to the natural environment, mainly to breeding birds. Well, it is believed that the mice are not that dangerous to the natural environment of Spitsbergen, but nevertheless, of course, it would not be good at, uh, at all if the mice uh, move out of the Grumandbühne area and really establish themselves permanently in the natural environment of Spitsbergen. So that may, of course, happen uh, considering um, climate change that is going on in the Arctic at a great pace. So scientists, uh, scientists want to know more about the mice in Spitsbergen, and it seems to be a mouse year. There have been a lot of mice in, seen in Longyearbyen, and um, scientists have encouraged the locals to put up traps. So people are doing that, and the first ones have actually been caught already. And uh, Max Schweiger was one of the first guys, or if not the first one, to get a mouse so, and he has kindly provided some pictures which I can share. So that's quite interesting. It's an alien species to Spitsbergen and would be very important to get rid of it. As far as I know at the moment there are not yet any plans to get rid of it, to get rid of it, to control it actively. It's just that the situation is being monitored and the current project in Longyearbyen, the mouse hunting season, is part of that, the monitoring of the mouse population. It's actually important to be aware of the presence of mice in Spitsbergen because they can spread a certain uh, parasite and uh, this parasite can also be dangerous for humans. It's the fox tapeworm and the fox tapeworm needs mice to, uh, to live. And it's actually not the stage of the parasite that is living in the mice that is dangerous to humans. That's the uh, larva stage which is living in the intestines of Arctic foxes. But if you happen to be out in, on tour in the area of Grumandbühne or Kohlesbukta, which is not far away from that, then it is certainly a wise idea to boil water.
that you take from the nature to use as drinking water. And of course, if the mice happen to establish themselves permanently elsewhere, then this is a me measure that we may have to apply elsewhere as well. So much about the mouse hunting season that has started now in Longyearbyen. Thank you very much for listening. See you next time.